So over the years, we've had quite a few different breeds of chickens. Some of them worked really well for us, others not so well. Here's my list of the five breeds that have worked the best for us with our particular climate and our particular setup. We live on the Canadian prairies where it gets down to minus 40, even colder if you factor in the wind chill. We don't actually heat our chicken coops and we don't lose any birds in the winter. One of the keys to this is choosing the right breeds for the extreme cold. Now, there are hundreds of these best cold hardy lists online that I've seen. However, I've tried a number of the breeds on these lists, and while they did tolerate mild cold, I find they didn't do as well in the extreme cold like the minus 40s that we have here. Looking at you, frostbite. <laughs> so in our experience, the birds that have worked the best for us are the ones with these smaller combs and wattles, as well as ones with clean shanks, so meaning they don't have any feathers on their legs. This doesn't mean that if you have birds with larger combs or feathers on their legs that they won't be able to work for you. There's definitely a huge amount of people who have things like Brahmas or Sussex and whatnot, and they work really well for them. I'm just speaking from our experience of what we've had the best success with. Now, just because I don't list your favorite breed here doesn't mean that this breed can't work in the cold and the Canadian prairies and whatnot. It's just that we either had it and we didn't have much luck with it with our particular setup, or we just haven't tried it yet, so we don't know. All right, so breed number five is the Buckeye. I had Buckeyes for a season, and they definitely fit the criteria of a cold, hardy breed. They look similar to a Rhode Island Red, but instead of having those big single combs, they have smaller pea combs. They are a unique breed, being one of the only breeds to be developed by a woman, named Metcalf. So if that's a piece of history that interests you, definitely check that breed out. Next up are the Icelandics. I had Icelandics a number of years ago, and I absolutely love them, and I'm probably going to get them again. I love that they came in a variety of colors, and since I like the genetics of colors, that was something that was very interesting to me. They were very hardy and very active in the cold, sometimes a little bit too active, and they were kind of hard to track down and round up. I'm a little bit more hands-off with all of my livestock, so most of them are somewhat flighty, but the Icelandics definitely took the cake. Most of the Icelandics that I had had a smaller single comb or a rose comb, so they did really well. Some of the ones with single combs have just the tiniest little tips of them that froze off, but it wasn't a huge deal. So at number three, 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 <laughs> at number three, we have the Wyandots. or Wyandotties, I'm not sure how to pronounce it. I'm just going to say Wyandots. These are a really popular breed and they have a rose comb and slightly smaller waddles, so that makes them a really good choice for the winter time. I really love my Wyandotte hens. Those things were massive. They were awesome. However, my rooster was the only rooster that I've ever had that was aggressive. And when I've asked people as well, when they have aggressive roosters, it always seems to be Wyandotte. So I'm not sure if that's just a trait of the breed or not. The animal just kept charging, almost evil, sinister. I'm curious, let me know in the comments below if you've had Wyandots. Did you find their roosters to be aggressive at all, or is that just coincidence? However, they did really well in the cold. I really like them. <laughs> so I'm here trying to film these videos, and this bugger here is knocking out the microphone from the hook, and he's knocking over the tripod. He's kind of a little annoying little guy here, but he's so cute. So my next favorite breed is the Americana. They come in a variety of colors and they have a smaller pea comb. As well, they have like a bearded area of feathers that covers their wattles. I found my Americanas to be a super calm and friendly breed. Plus, they lay blue eggs and that's pretty awesome. Okay, so hands down, my absolute favorite breed for the wintertime are the Chanticleer, which is what I have in the coop behind me here. They were developed in Canada, so that alone tells you they're a really good breed for the cold. There are two varieties of Chanticleer. One of them is the Partridge Chanticleer, which was developed in Alberta. The other one is the White Chanticleer, which was developed in Quebec. They are a wonderful chicken. They lay really well in the wintertime. I find them to be quite friendly and calm, at least in my experience. They have a cushion comb, which lays almost flat in their head. With the cushion comb and the tiny wattles, they rarely end up with frostbite, which makes for very happy birds. If you live in an extreme cold climate, I definitely recommend checking out the Chanticleer. Okay, so now that you've got your breed sorted out, you definitely want to check out this video, which tells you how we actually keep our birds over winter time without heating our coops. And of course, as soon as I hit record, these guys here start honking and making a lot of noise. 